Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is lesson 2.4, part one. We're gonna start taking a look at some complex numbers. So two objectives. We are going to use the imaginary unit i to write out some complex numbers, and then we're gonna add, subtract, and multiply some of those complex numbers. Now before we get too far into things, I should define what i is, and i is something that we're gonna to use to represent the square root of negative one. And I know normally we're not allowed to do square roots of negative numbers, but once we introduce and start using this i value, it'll let us do a bunch of different things mathematically speaking. So as far as what a complex number looks like, we've got this standard form for a complex number, and it looks like a plus b i. And what we have to make sure is that this b value in there isn't zero. Otherwise, this imaginary piece just goes away because anything times zero is zero. This a value out in front is also gonna represent some sort of real number. And if we don't have one of those a values, if we just have that bi piece, we call that thing a pure imaginary number since it's just got the imaginary piece to it. So first what we're gonna take a look at doing is just taking some things and rewriting them in that standard form for complex numbers. And then once we have them written out, we're gonna identify both the real and the imaginary pieces. So if we take a look at example A on our screen right now, we've got negative four plus the square root of negative 25. Now, normally we would say we can't do this square root because there's a negative number underneath there. But now that we have this I value at our disposal, it'll make things a little bit easier on us. Now what I want you to remember is a way of simplifying radicals. With the number underneath here, we're allowed to kind of split it up using multiplication. So in order to get this negative 25, we could split it up into 25 and negative one. And then remember, we would have to take the square root of each piece. Well, 25 is really easy to square root. Okay, we get five there. And now we've got this square root of negative one. Well, earlier we just called that thing i. So we can just rewrite this as negative four plus five i. Now, if we're talking about the real piece, it's gonna be this a value out in front and then this thing on the end, the five i, the thing that has the i in it, is our imaginary piece. So if we try out these next few examples, with this one we've got the square root of negative 49 plus 10. Well, I'm gonna split it up just like I did with that last example. I'm gonna split this up into 49 and negative one. If we square root the 49, we get seven. If we take the square root of negative one, we get i, and then we've got this plus 10 piece. Now, typically, to write these things in standard form, we would write the real piece first and then the imaginary piece second. So I'm gonna flip this around to make it 10 plus 7i with the real piece out in front and our imaginary 7i on the end. Now this last example might be a little bit trickier because if we take a look at the 32 underneath here, 32 is not a perfect square, but we can break this down a little bit. I'm gonna break it down into 32 and negative one, but then I'm gonna break this 32 down a little bit more so that we have a perfect square to deal with. So I'm thinking we could break 32 down into 16 and two. So if we take the square root of 16, we get four. If we take the square root of two, well, that's just the square root of two, and we've got this square root of negative one, which is i. I am gonna rearrange this just a little bit because having this i on the end, it might look like the i is maybe underneath the radical, so what we typically do is we put the i between the four and the remaining square root. So it's like four i root two. And then we've still got this minus 18 thing hanging out on the end. Again, I'm gonna flip the order on these things just so the real piece comes first and the imaginary piece comes second. So negative 18 plus four i root two. Before we get into doing some operations with these complex numbers, I wanna talk about some different powers of i, just because these things are gonna pop up as we get into like multiplying some of these complex numbers together. So we know that i is the square root of negative one. Well, if we were to square i, okay, that'd be like the square root of negative one squared. So the square root and the squared would just cancel each other out. So that would lead us to believe that i squared is negative one. So if we start taking a look at some of these higher powers, well, i cubed, is like i squared times another i. Earlier we said i squared was negative one, and well, i is just i. So this is like having negative i. If we look at i to the fourth, well, that's kind of like i squared times another i squared. 
Well, for both of those, i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is just a positive 1. If we look at i to the fifth, okay, this pattern is going to start repeating itself eventually. i to the fifth is like i to the fourth times i. Well, earlier i to the fourth was just 1, and 1 times i is just i. So we started back over at i. If we take i to the sixth, well, that's like i to the fourth times i squared. From earlier, i to the fourth power is 1, and i squared is negative 1. So if we take 1 times negative 1, we're going to get negative 1. Okay? And then we can just continue the pattern from here. So it went from i to negative 1 to negative i to positive 1, then back to i, negative 1, negative i, positive 1, and then we start back over again, i, negative 1, so on and so forth. I think you guys can see what's going on here. All right, we are gonna start doing some operations with these complex numbers, and we're gonna start off with adding and subtracting, and we can treat it just like combining like terms. So we're going to add or subtract the real pieces to our complex numbers, and then we're going to add or subtract the imaginary pieces. So we're treating these i's almost like a normal variable. So in this first example, we're gonna take seven plus three i, and we're gonna add on five minus four i. So if we look at the real pieces first, okay, we've got a seven in the first complex number and a five in the second complex number. Well, seven plus five is 12. If we look at the imaginary pieces, three i and negative four i, while combining those, three i plus negative four i is negative one i. In example B here, we've got 4i minus, then we've got this negative 3 plus 5i, and then we're going to add on 2 minus 6i. Before we get started on this one, I'm going to clean things up just a little bit with this middle stuff. I'm going to distribute this negative through here just because I personally like adding more than I like subtracting. And now what I'm going to do is, just like on the last one, I'm going to identify all the real pieces to put together, and then we'll take a look at the imaginary pieces. So the real pieces I see are a positive 3 right here, and I also see a positive 2 over there. Combining those things, we've got 5. If we look at all of the imaginary pieces, 4i, negative 5i, and negative 6i, well, 4i plus a negative 5i is negative 1i. And then if we subtract six more i, we've got negative 7i. Taking a look at example C, the very first thing I see is some subtraction going on on the very end of this problem. So just like I did on the last one, I'm going to distribute that negative through there just because I like adding more than I like subtracting. And now I'm gonna start combining like terms. So we've got a five and a three, we've got eight there, plus a negative eight, we just get zero for that piece. If we look at the imaginary pieces, negative one i plus four i would give us three i, and then if we subtract three i from there, we get another zero as far as the imaginary pieces go. Well, zero plus zero is just zero. D is a little bit different because right now we don't have any imaginary pieces there. I still see some negative square roots. So before we can even get started on this one, we need to clean those things up. So with this square root of negative five, we can break that down into five and negative one underneath there, square root each piece. Well, we can't really break down the square root of five at all, but we can turn this square root of negative one into an i. So I'm gonna rewrite this whole first piece as seven plus i times the square root of five. With this second piece, uh, I'm focusing on the 45. We can break that down into 45 and negative one, but we can break the 45 down into nine and five. If we square root the nine, we get three. I'm going to square root the negative one to get i. And then if we square root this five, we end up with a root five on the end. We didn't do anything with the nine yet, so that's still hanging out, nine plus. And then it looks like there's subtraction between all of this stuff. So let me write that out. And then we're going to combine like terms. Now, just like I've been doing, I'm gonna take this negative and distribute it through so I can add instead of subtract these things. So distribute the negative. Now, if we combine like terms, we've got seven plus negative nine. Well, that's negative two. If we look at those imaginary pieces, 
Um, with this i root 5, it's like having 1 i root 5, and if we add on a negative 3 i root 5, well, 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2 i root 5. All right, last example on this page. Here's what we're told. We're given this a plus 6 plus this 2bi stuff, and we're told that that's gonna be equal to 6 minus 8i. Now what we have to find are the a and b values that make this true. So, just like we've been doing the entire time, we're first gonna look at the real pieces. Okay, on the left-hand side, as far as real numbers, we've got this a plus 6, and on the right-hand side for our real numbers, we've also got a 6. So in order to find our a value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an equation with these real pieces. So we're gonna take the a plus six and say that that has to equal the other six. Treating this just like an algebra one equation, we would subtract six from both sides and we'd end up with a equals zero. Doing something similar with those imaginary pieces. We've got this two bi and we've also got a negative eight i. If we set up an equation with that, 2bi equals negative 8i, again, treat it just like an Algebra 1 equation. We can divide both sides by i, and those things will cancel out. Then we've got 2b equals negative 8. If we divide by 2, then we'll get a b value of negative 4. Now if we take a look at multiplication using these complex numbers and imaginary numbers, what we're gonna do is we're first going to do any distributive property stuff that we need to take care of, and then we're gonna use what we talked about earlier with those different powers of i to simplify some of this stuff down. In this first example, we've got eight i times four minus three i. So just like we set up above, we're first going to distribute the 8i, so 8i times 4 is 32i, and if we take 8i times negative 3i, well, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, and i times i is i squared. So now, using what we talked about with these powers of i, earlier we said that i squared was the exact same thing as negative 1. So if we take negative one times our negative 24, this is really like having 32i plus 24, because a negative times a negative makes that a positive. And then I'm gonna flip the order on these things because we want the real piece to come first and the imaginary piece to come second. So 24 plus 32i. Next example, letter B, we're taking three minus i times five plus four i. Now, if we treat these things just like there's x's in there, we would multiply these by foiling. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So if we multiply those first pieces together, three times five is 15. Multiplying the outside pieces, three times four i is plus 12 i. The inside pieces, negative i times five is negative five i. And then our last pieces, negative i times four i, well, negative one times four is negative four, and i times i is i squared. Now, we're gonna clean this up by combining some like terms. So I see 12i minus five i in the middle, so that is seven i. Just like we said earlier, this i squared is like a negative one. So negative four times negative one is like a positive four, and if we add the 15 to that, we get 19 plus this seven i. Letter C doesn't look like foiling, but since it's five minus three i squared, squaring something means times itself. So this is like five minus three i times another copy of five minus three i. So we are gonna have to foil this one out just like we did in letter B. So five times five is 25. Five times negative three i is negative 15 i. Uh, five times this other negative three i is another negative 15 i. And if we take negative three i times negative three i, we get positive nine i squared. Again, combining like terms, negative 15 i and negative 15 i is negative 30 i. i squared is just like negative one. So nine times negative one is negative nine. And if we add 25, we get 16. So our final answer is 16 minus 30i. 
We're actually going to wait and do example D in class, so you guys can just skip that one for right now. That means that this is it for this video. Remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.